In this video, we're going to, I'm going to teach a topic called stoichiometry, and I'm going to do it in a very different way, and I'm going to tell it as a story. I call it the business. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start on a new piece of paper, and I want you to take this reaction and write it across the top of your page. Spread it out pretty good, because we're going to write things under every single column. And I'm going to tell it as a story. So you have to listen carefully, and then we'll explain the story and do the math. Basically, we're doing mathematics with reactions. All right, copper solid reacts with silver one nitrate aqueous AQ means it's been dissolved in water to yield copper two nitrate AQ dissolved in water and silver which is a solid. All right. Now in today's world, copper is very expensive. Silver nitrate is used as a film developer. We don't even use it anymore, but you've probably seen it in movies where people develop film in like a bathroom in a dark room and they'll develop their own film. That's what that's used for. Copper to nitrate uh, doesn't have an everyday use, but then pure silver, solid silver like you would make jewelry out of. Okay, here's the story. Listen and write with me as we go along. It's the 1970s. And in the 1970s, copper was really cheap. People develop their own film at home, and uh, I'm in a college chemistry class, and you and I are friends, and I've called you and said, we're going to make a lot of money. I just figured out a chemical reaction, and you and I are going to make a lot of money. So I have you come over to my house, and we're going to make some serious money because right here, you and I are going to sell for a lot of money straight silver, and the price of silver in the 70s was incredibly high. It's almost the high as gold. And there were people that did this reaction, made a lot of money. It was a perfect timing in the 70s. Okay, so here's what happens. I bring you over and I show you this reaction. It's a single replacement reaction in which copper reacts with silver nitrate, pure copper, film developer, makes this, which we're not worried about, but it makes pure silver. And we're going to make pure silver. And so you and I go to the metal store and we buy a one pound bag of copper. Now why would I buy one pound? Well we don't ever write this in a reaction but we're going to go ahead and put the ones in real quick. Okay we buy a one pound bag of copper then we drive to the photo mat and we buy two gallons why two gallons? Because it's aqueous of this. When we mix them together we should get one gallon of this and two pounds of this. Now notice the recipe says one of these with two of these gives me one of those and two of those and that's what we've done. One pound, two gallons, we get one gallon and two pounds. Great ratio. I put in one pound of cheap copper and I get two pounds of very expensive silver. Shh, don't tell anyone we're doing this because if other people can do this reaction they'll make the money we should be making. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make silver very fast but we're going to sell it really slow so that we can make as much money as possible. If we sell it too fast, the price of silver will go down. And again, there were guys in the 70s that did this. So we decide let's make it faster. We go back and we buy a two pound bag of copper. We doubled the recipe. That means we need to go buy four gallons of silver nitrate. When we mix them together, we're going to get two gallons of this and four pounds of this. You'll notice it's all ratios. Doubled this, this doubled, this doubled, that doubled. We go back and we buy five pounds of copper. How much of this do we need to buy? One goes to five, so two is going to go to ten. Ten gallons of this. Mix it together, we're going to get five gallons of this and ten pounds of this. Now my anniversary is coming and so my wife likes little bears and so I find a silversmith. Now if you've ever heard of James Avery that makes jewelry, he's a silversmith. He takes silver and makes jewelry out of it. And so I asked the silversmith, I want a little bear made out of pure silver and that I want to give to my wife on my anniversary. And he tells me he needs six pounds, six pounds of silver to do that. Now notice, two to six is triple. So that means I need to go get three pounds of this and six gallons of this. And when I put it together, I'm going to get three gallons of this and six pounds. I'll give him the six pounds and he can make what I need. So even though I knew what I needed, I know what I need to start with to get there. It's all ratios. Now you're the smart one. You start looking around, and we're making our money right here. We're doing great. But you start looking around in the 70s, there's this brand new business called miracle Grow that makes fertilizer. Plants need copper nitrate in order to bloom better. They don't get enough copper from the soil. So you call them, 
and you tell them that we have a hundred gallons of copper nitrate that we would sell them for their corporation that they're going to use nationwide. So we sign a contract with them. Well, if I need a hundred gallons of this, one to a hundred, that means I need a hundred pounds of copper to start with. I need 200 gallons. They start asking questions about all this film developer. Don't tell them because we're going to make a lot of money. We're going to end up getting 200 pounds of silver to sell. So now we're selling both of our products. And there are corporations in the world that they buy raw materials. They mix them together. For example, plastic. They take oil and they put oil through a couple of processes. They know exactly how much plastic they're going to get and how much they're going to sell it for. Okay, so there are lots of businesses. If you own a business in which you're making cakes or cupcakes, you buy the flour and the oil and, and all of those things, and you need to know how much you're going to be able to make because that's where you make your money. And you need to make sure that what you're getting at the end is exactly what you're supposed to, and you make as much money as possible. If you don't, your business will go out of business because you can't make enough. All right? And so it's all ratios. We go back to the uh, metal store, and this time they only have one pound left we bought everything else can we still excuse me I said the wrong number they have a half a pound can we still do this well sure just like you can have a a gallon of milk or a half a gallon of milk you can have half the recipe well that's half so that means I need to go buy one gallon of this when I mix them together I don't get a lot but I get a half gallon of this and I get a pound of this doesn't matter what ratio it always works Okay, it always works. Now, let me show you something real quick. I have to erase. You can't. Uh, if I were you, on your page, I'd skip down about six or seven uh, lines. But let's say we had this generic reaction. 3x plus 4y makes 5a plus 7b. Being real simple here, if I had six of this, not worried about units, 3 goes to 6, that's doubling. I know this is 8, this is 10. This is 14. It's all ratios. It's not always 1, 2, 1, 2, but the, the same math works every time. What if I had 15 of this? Well, five to, 15 divided by 5 is multiplying by 3. So this is going to be 9, this is going to be 12, and this is going to be 21. They all multiply by 3. So what if this one is 28? 28 divided by 7 is 4. So this is 20, and this is 16, and this is 12. It's all ratios. Now, sometimes the math doesn't always work out that good. Sometimes you're going to need your calculator. What if this one's uh, 4.2? Well, you grab your handy-dandy calculator, and what you would do is uh, you're going to take 4.2 divided by 3 is 1.4. So your change is 1.4. And if I take 1.4 times 4, this is 5.6. 1.4 times 5 gives me 7. And 1.4 times 7 out here gives me 9.8. So I can get every answer I need. So 4.2 divided by 3. So basically here's what I'm doing. If this was 15, 15 divided by 3 is a change of 5. So I multiply everybody times 5. But in a case like this one, 4.2 divided by 3 is 1.4. Take that change, multiply by everybody. I can calculate anything. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. And so it's all about ratios. It's all about ratios. Now, in the whole story, everything's right except I told you one fib, so let me fix it real quick. It's the 1970s. I'll start the story again. It's the 1970s. I found this reaction. You and I are going to make a lot of money, and so I prove it to you, and the, the lie I told you or the fib I told you is this. Is pound equal to gallon? The answer is no. Now, I used pound because it was solid and gallon because it was aqueous, but in reality, it doesn't work like that. Here's how it works. You and I go to the metal store, and we buy one mole of copper. We buy, go to the photo mat, and we buy two moles of silver nitrate. Now, you may be thinking, why are you in moles? Well, notice they're both in the same unit. You don't have to convert anything. Everybody's in the same unit. Well, notice the recipe says one of these with two of these gives me one and two. I'll get one mole of this and two moles of this when I mix them. The same thing is still true. I put in one mole, and I got double out the other side. If I buy five moles of this, that's multiplying by five. This is going to be ten moles, and five moles, and ten moles. The math is all the same. If I needed six moles of this to make that bear for my anniversary, six divided by two is a change of three. So this is going to be three moles, and this is going to be six moles, and this is going to be three moles. 
So really, I can't do it in pounds and gallons. It really has to work in moles. And this is probably the first time you've ever heard this, but the numbers that you actually have when you balance are actually in moles. Make sure you write this in. One mole of this with two moles of this will give me one mole of this and two moles of this. Those big numbers are actually in moles. So what happens if I had one like this? I have 33 moles. Well, 33 divided by 1 is a change of 33. So this is 66 moles. This is 33 moles. And this is 66 moles. Everybody's in moles. So here's the deal. In order to work this math, you always have to be in moles. When you're in moles, you can calculate anything. So what happens if you have 20.78, 22.78? And I needed all the other answers. Grab your calculator. Can't do it in your head. 22.78 divided by 2 is 11.39. There's my change. 11.39 times 1, well, this is 11.39. 11.39 times 1, 11.39. 11.39 times 2 is the 22.78. I can calculate any value, and they're all in moles. I can do all this work when it's in moles. It's all about moles. Even if you have even if you have very odd numbers. Okay, so let me do one more real quick. So what if I had this 1.42 moles and I needed to know everybody else. Okay, well 1.42, 1.42 divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.71. 0 0.71 is the change. Take the 0 0.71 times this is 0.71. This one's 0.71, and this one's 1.42. So if I go back to a generic formula, all right, if I'm in moles, if this is 1.73, can I get all the others? Absolutely. 1.73 divided by 3, the change is 0.58. Make sure you see that on the screen. 0.58. So I would take 0.5. 5, 8 times 4 times 5 and times 7, and I've got every answer. So 0 0.58 times 4 equals 2.32. 0 0.58 times 5 equals 2.9. And 0 0.58 times 7, 4.06, 4 4.1, they're all one decimal, or 4.06 is good. I've got every answer, and they're all in moles. That's how you do calculations with reactions. It's all about, please catch this, it's all about moles. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is this. You'll notice that when I worked all of these, sometimes I even have students that do this, you'll notice I do all the math in columns. I did all the math here, all the math here, and all the math here, and all the math here. If I'm in moles, it makes it super easy. In the next section, we're going to talk about what happens if you're not in moles.